stir your mind a little bit. But uh, right now, before I give you the subject, I'm just wondering if you would stand back up with me and let's tell God thank you. And let's love him some and adore him until you are satisfied. Can you stand together? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, the God. Yes, Lord. When, when you are satisfied, you may be seated. Oh my God, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, wonderful King, thank God, been so good to me I cannot tell it all, just can't tell it all, taking all my sins away, <laughs> hallelujah, thank you Jesus, it's very good of you to come tonight. And if you're ready with your pad and pen, we will give you the subject and assign the scriptures for you. Thank God. This is a message that I, I have on the back of the card. was first taught July the 4th, 19th. 1979 in Campbelltown, Australia. Uh, something interesting, you, nothing new really, some of you perhaps have heard it before, but I'm praying that it will help you uh, realize what this life is all about. Our subject is temptation three ways. We call it temptation three ways. You'll see tonight that Satan has three avenues in which to get to you, to spoil your soul, move you out of God, and damn you. Temptation three ways. He has three avenues that he can get to you, to spoil you and wreck you and damn you. We'll show you tonight how he does it. We're going to give you a case history of a young man who was considered a prince among men. And yet the enemy got through to him. But nevertheless, when you hear the end of it, you, you'll enjoy it. He, he was hurt, but still he made it with the king. He made it in. Temptation three ways. Here's the first scripture. Just write it. I will read this one for you. First Peter chapter five. First Peter five, verse eight through eleven. That is the one I will read for you. First Peter five, verse eight through eleven. And I need to read it for this one. Psalm. 106, the 106th Psalm, verse 13 through 15. Psalm 106, 13 through 15. That's right, thank you. Psalm 106, verse 13 through 15. And here's another. You'll recognize all of these scriptures. You've been through them before. First Corinthians, we need a reader for chapter 7. Verse 3 through 5. That's good. Thank you. That's very good. Temptation three ways. How are we doing so far? Pretty good? All right. Here we need a reader for St. Luke 12, 16 through 21. That's it. St. Luke chapter 12, verse 16 through 21. And another reader here, First Timothy three six. Oh well, now now, I got a new reader tonight. All right here, 
1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 6 that's so nice praise the Lord anybody miss one or oh, want me to go back over temptation three ways just to remind you what life is all about some people get the idea well you get saved and I got, I got a good strong pastor now and everything's going smooth and I can just kind of relax and sail on in <laughs> It ain't like that. It's not like that at all. Okay. I guess we're ready now. We're, it's happy time. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Holy Ghost. Thank God. Temptation. Three ways. This is um, just a different application to what you already know. I don't think you hear anything new tonight, but I'm hoping this will stir you up, make you alert to reality, so that you don't try to do like some people do, they get on the old ship of Zion, cross their legs, and sail on over to the other side. It's not done like that. It's a pressing way. It's a pressing way. So many start out and don't finish. Temptation, three ways. You may turn with me to First Peter chapter 5. Follow with me starting at verse number 8. You will recognize it right away. Temptation, three ways. Good number of you have found it, a few are still turning. I think I see a hand. Do you need a Bible? We need a Bible right here. Put that hand up again. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank God for all of you. I want you to keep your heart open tonight so that God can do what needs doing. Some of you know that in the midst of people who believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, you do not have to wait for an altar call to get blessed. Yes, as the Holy Ghost moves out there and gets close to you, whatever need doing, let him do it. Yeah, when you feel him moving close around, you know it is there. Sometimes it's a little bit like electricity. Sometimes it gets kind of warm. Other times you go to tingling. And you, you just can't be still. Well, when you're feeling close by, let him do the job. You're not saved, say, save me, Jesus. I'm sick of this life I'm living. Wash my sins away. You don't have the Holy Ghost, so fill me, Lord. Time is short. The days are evil. I need some dynamite. I need the Holy Ghost. Fill me. Hallelujah. If you're not well, just say, heal me. I don't need this tumor. Purify my blood. Take the pressure down and give me 20-20 in both eyeballs. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank God. So, when you feel moving close, let him do the job. Hallelujah. If I see you stand up and say, thank you, that won't upset me at all. It won't bother me at all. Just let him have his way. Temptation. Three ways. I think you're looking at it now. First Peter 5, verse 8 through 11. And listen to this uh, warning given to us and, uh, from the apostle Peter. He says, be sober. Keep a level verb. Be vigilant. Be watchful. Be watchful. Because your adversary the devil and walketh about seeking whom he may devour so then you think of a lion that is hungry he has missed catching his prey and is hungry and he's mad 
So the enemy, like a crazy, hungry lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Therefore, he's, he continues here, whom resist steadfast in the faith. I think you heard those words. Resist steadfast in the faith. Uh, he's nobody to push over. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. All the blood-washed, sanctified people worldwide. The enemy stalks you like a crazy lion. He can't get across the bloodline. He can't fool with the Holy Ghost. But he stalks you hoping you get careless. You'll get weak. You'll stop praying. Don't fast anymore. I know your time looking at the soap operas or running your big mouth on the telephone talking stuff you got no business talking. He's stalking. He never gets off your case. He don't take no vacation. Amen. That's one thing about Snoopford. He never gives up. Never gives up. Can't get you one way, he'll try another. He knows he's going to the lake of fire. He's determined to turn you there also. There's no way for him to be saved. He, he's lost. And so he's out to make you miserable. Whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But, verse number 10, the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that ye have suffered a while, so you know suffering's on the journey. <laughs> uh -huh. After that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, Settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The enemy has three ways, three avenues to get to you. We are made body, soul, and spirit. It appears that every person alive is weaker in one part of his makeup than he is the other two. There are certain weaknesses in the body, some in the soul, some in the spirit. So the enemy will work you over, upset you, knock you off balance, make things happen unexpected, to observe your behavior pattern and see how you're going to react to it. And he stays on your case. He'll test you out through the body and through the soul and through the spirit because he knows the weakness at each point. And when he discovers which part is your weakest part, then he concentrates all his energy on that part. In many cases, he destroys the person. But in a lot of other cases, <laughs> when he come up against the Holy Ghost folks, <laughs> he'll have to pack his rags and hit the road. <laughs> Thank God Almighty, how good is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The Holy Ghost is all right to him feeling pretty good here. He's done right. So, here's what. Here's how he'll, he'll operate. Now, in the body, there are quite a few weaknesses, but the two prominent ones is uh, your desire for food and your desire for sex. That's something you're born with, it's natural. But the enemy 
can play with that and tamper with it so that uh, some people rather than to eat to live <laughs> uh, they live to eat but that's all in the brain something eat. all the time wake up in the middle of the night supposed to be sleeping thinking about something to eat And uh, don't be surprised if you're not that bad. <laughs> right to the refrigerator. <laughs> or <laughs> the cabinet down there. And get eaten. So here we see in Psalm 106, 13 through 15, there's such a thing as lusting for food. You can lust for it. And you do know that it was eating the wrong thing that brought sin upon the whole human race. Adam and Eve had to do with eating. And so we find here in Psalm 106, 13 through 15. Let's hear that. They soon forgot his words. The children of Israel, God had wonderfully blessed them. He had protected them from the plagues brought them out of bondage, drowned their enemies in the sea. And listen, what happened? Okay. They waited not for his counsel. They waited not for his counsel. They soon forgot his wonders, waited not for his counsel. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness. Now you're going to see that they actually lusted for food. They lusted for food. Lusted exceedingly in the wilderness. And tempted God in the desert. And tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request. All right, so since they were so hard-headed, bull-headed, and stubborn, he gave them their request. But sent leanness into their souls. They got fat in the flesh, but they got lean in the soul. Yes. So it is today that some of us are overdoing this thing. Uh, eating at meal time, in between time, and all the time. <laughs> Don't care what it is. Pizza, or whatever you like here. Yeah. Upside down cake, uh, macaroni and cheese, collard green, ham hock, can of sweet potato, and cornbread with no sugar in it. <laughs> you eat yourself to death. and got swole up north, east, south, and west <laughs> and lean in the soul. So the enemy, he, he'll let you help yourself. Just eat, 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 eat. He'll just push it on. Just get some more of this. Get some of that. You didn't get this. Get some of that. <laughs> he'll encourage you. And have you swole up all over the place? Don't, ain't standing about fasting and don't want to pray either. <laughs> Fat in the flesh, lean in the soul. And just from that, he can knock you flat on your backside. Move you clean out of God because of a lust for food. And you know there's hunger in many parts of the world. But I'll guarantee you, every country that you go to in the world, you're going to see some fat folks. <laughs> Indians, Eskimos, Chinese, <laughs> you're going to see some fat folks. Amen. And you're hurting yourself, you're hurting yourself. People like that, it's easy to contact certain diseases. It's too big, just too big. So the enemy... He works on that. Food. All right, now, on the first Corinthians 7, 3 through 5, this has to do with your sexual relationship. Now, you know it's normal. God made us that way for reproduction. But uh, it can get out of hand. If you 
of a person where your, your sexual drive is stronger than you are, if your sexual passion tells you what to do instead of you telling it what to do, you're in trouble. It's not supposed to ruin you. You're so hot you can't handle yourself. <laughs> and you don't know what you're going to do next. <laughs> you're a bad sheep. And uh, we, no way for us to get a tally of the men and women who have been destroyed through sex. Those that are in high positions and common folks have been ruined through sex. No way for us to get a tally of it worldwide. So then, because of that, let's hear how it reads this in 1 Corinthians 7, 3 through 5. It's talking about the saved husband and the saved wife. But here are some things you must do to make things smoother around the home. Because some of you know that uh, very rare do you find a husband and a wife equally mated sexually. Usually one partner is stronger in passion than the other. And if it is not regulated, it can cause problems. Some of you know that uh, you see husband and wife coming out the house together smiling <laughs> but somebody ain't happy <laughs> they're just putting up a front somebody ain't happy because things ain't so sweet in the bedroom <laughs> and so it is here first Corinthians 7 3 through 5 let, is, the, mm -hmm. let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence let the husband be very kind and gentle to his wife and the wife is uh, the weaker vessel. A holy woman is somebody beautiful and special. The husband must be kind and gentle and considerate of his wife, all right? And likewise, also the wife unto the husband. Likewise, the wife, if you're going to be worth anything in God's sight, you must learn how to be quiet. And you must learn how to encourage your husband, push him and make him great. Deny yourself to make the husband great. Now, if you're going to try to be equal to the husband, you're going to tell him off and boss him around. <laughs> well, you ain't going to make it. You have, you have disobeyed the scriptures. You're out of God. And you ought to be glad he's saved because he might back you up to the wall. <laughs> That's right. I said, look here, mama. You don't straighten up. <laughs> you pack your ass and get out of my house. That's right. You just might do that. You're supposed to love your husband, learn how to be quiet, be subject unto him, yes, and make, push him, make him great. But here you're trying to boss the thing. You're heading on right. So then, read some more. The wife hath not power of her own body. The wife does not have power over her own body. But the husband. She needs her husband in order to be complete. All right? And likewise also, likewise the also. husband mm -hmm. hath not power of his own body, uh -huh. but the wife. He needs the wife to be completed. All right. Defraud ye not one the other. Okay, so here what we're talking about is husband and wife, uh, do not neglect one another and do not be overbearing one to the other. You see, it happens both ways. Sometimes, leave me alone, I don't be bothered. That's all you think about. I'm tired. And, you see, and the other thing is <laughs> the <laughs> complete opposite. And it causes problems. It causes bad problems. All right, you may go on. Accept it be with consent for a time. All right. That ye may give yourselves to fasting, fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. Okay. And come together again. Then come together again. That Satan tempt you not. Satan tempt you not. For your incontinency. For your incontinency. So there are problems in that line of 
cohabitation, uh, this, their problems. So then, as I say, since it is rare to find a husband and wife that's equally mated, those of us who say we know sweet Jesus, we must be kind and gentle and considerate one of another. And it is a good thing, it doesn't happen too often, maybe not as often as it ought to, where both husband and wife fast and pray together. It's a rare thing. Some pick their time and others pick the other time. But when you get husband and wife that fast and pray together, you got something beautiful going on. And uh, that touches God and makes him move on your behalf. Straighten things out around the house and in your life. So the enemy will work you over and when he works on that body part, he try to make you just eat, 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 little snacks all the time, eat, 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 looking at television. <laughs> just don't know what to cook get all lopsided and out of shape and <laughs> and if he finds out that that's not your weakness he works on that sex drive yes sir he's trying to stir you up tell you you're born different you're part Indian <laughs> <laughs> and you're hot and you need special attention Anything like that to, to stir you up and knock you out of sweet Jesus through that avenue. Okay, then in the soul there are weaknesses, but uh, one of the, the biggest ones is to desire the comforts of life, to have it made, to be financially secure so that you can just coast on in there. <laughs> and here's an example of that. Luke 12, 16 through 21. And he spake a parable unto them. He spake a parable unto them. Saying. Saying. The ground of a certain rich man. Yes. Brought forth plentifully. Sure enough, okay. And he thought within himself. He thought within himself. Saying. Mm-hmm. What shall I do? What am I going to do here? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. said, I don't even have room enough to store my fruits. And he said, He said, This will I do. This is what I'm going to do. I will pull down my barns. Pull down my barns. And build greater. And build larger barns. And there will I bestow all my fruits. There will I bestow all my fruits. And my goods. And all my goods. And I will say to my soul, I'll say to my soul, 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 thou hast much goods laid up for many years. You've got it made. So you've got it made. Read. Take thine ease. Take your ease. Eat. Eat. Drink. Drink. And be merry. Be merry. And God said unto him, God said unto him, thou fool. You fool. This night, tonight, thy soul shall be required of thee. You're going to die, man. <laughs> tonight you're going to kick the bucket. <laughs> All right. Then who shall those things be? Who shall those things be? Which thou hast provided. Which thou hast provided. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself. So is he that layeth up treasures for himself. And is not rich toward God. But is not rich toward God. So we want you, I think you already know that God doesn't mind you being rich and prosperous. He delights in that. But when you are rich toward yourself and not rich toward God, that's no good. So the enemy, through the soul, tries to make you go after the comforts of life even if it means you have to work two jobs overtime double time round time yes short car for short trips long car for long trips 
just got a new rug from Persia. <laughs> Lamps from Italy. And uh, you already got a Toyota, now you just ordered a long limousine. God must be first. Amen. He doesn't mind you. He wants you to prosper and, and be in good health, but he must be first. So then he'll make some people uh, hunting after the comforts and the finer things of life. In the meantime, the soul is wasting away. No time for sweet Jesus. God must be first. He will not be second to nothing or nobody. That's one thing you better learn about God. You put him first and give him what he asked for, you got it made. There's no stopping you. You can ask what you will, it shall be done. No good thing will he withhold from you. Just love him and keep him first. Your life can be a constant miracle. He specializes in miracles. Yeah. Nothing for him to move that curse that cancer, let it vanish, give you that 20-20 vision. Nothing for God. To put your organs back in place, that's nothing for God to do. But you love him and keep him first. Then you can ask what you will. It shall be done unto you. So there we have, through the body is a desire for food and for sex. Through the soul, the comforts of life, a tendency to be on the greedy side. Because you're putting those things ahead of God. And in the spirit of man, there are weaknesses. But the one that kills the man is pride. Pride. He's big, big-headed. Yeah. I'm the best. I'm the greatest. I'm the last. And when God made me, he broke the mold. <laughs> I'm the only one like me. And nobody else like me. I was born like that. And when I look in the mirror, sometimes I have to look real hard because I don't know who I'm looking at. <laughs> I know I got royal blood in me. One of them ancient kings was my great granddaddy. <laughs> Proud, big headed. I'm one of a kind. So here's what the enemy will do. You're naming the name of Christ. You have escaped from sin and you're under the blood now. Your name is written in heaven. But you, do you think that's going to make the enemy leave you alone? No, ma'am. No, sir. Like a crazy lion, he stalks you day and night. And then he'll do things, make things happen that you don't expect to catch you off guard, to sort of keep you off balance, then to observe how you react to it. And from observing the way you react to the crisis or the problem, he learns something about your nature and your makeup. So what he'll do, he'll, he'll keep a bump of you, keep you off balance, keep something going wrong, <laughs> See how are you going to react to it? That way he finds out which part of you is the weakest. Body, soul, or spirit. That's what he's after. He wants to find the weakest part. So he can jump on you with both feet. And tear you up or either you run him away. So that's what happened. Things happen unexpected. He just bumping you around there. <laughs> Keeping you off balance to observe your reaction. And when he 
by doing so, finds out which one of those parts is your weakest. If he cannot get you to eat yourself into bad hell, he cannot get you thinking you're the hottest thing born, <laughs> and if he can't <laughs> make you greedy after stuff and comforts of life, uh, then he'll, he'll try that pride, you see, and swell your head. He'll do that until he discovers which part is the weakest, and when he have discovered that, he directs all his energy on that one part. And brother, sister, if you are not Holy Ghost filled and live a life of consecration daily, he'll knock you flat down and stand back and laugh at you. So, 1 Timothy 3, 6. My friend is on the way up here. She'll make it if we be patient. <laughs> All right, now, let's see what you got. Now, I didn't know this. Okay, now, what is saying here? Anybody that is going to be a leader over God's people must not be a novice, a greenhorn, a beginner, a new convert. If you're going to be a leader over God's people, cannot be a beginner, a greenhorn, a novice, a new convert. Not a novice, okay. Let's, let's be lifted up with pride. Let's be lifted up with pride. He falls into the con condemnation of the devil. He falls into the same condemnation that Satan fell into. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Yes, it's easy for some people to get the big heads. That's right. Like uh, Tina, she can get up there and go to singing, going up yonder, and the folks act like they want to go up yonder. <laughs> but if she sit down and says, the devil said, you sure didn't put it on them tonight. <laughs> so they almost kicked the shoes off. <laughs> and she got to believe in that stuff. She get the big heads. Amen. Next time she get up, instead of going up, why is she going down now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's right. he, so what he does, he, he makes things happen that you don't expect to throw you off balance so he can observe your reaction and find out which part is your weakest. You can't make you overeat or can't make you too passionate in sex. You try to make you sort out the comforts of life. You're so busy grabbing and making money. You don't come to Bible study. You miss Sunday morning. Even miss the revival crusade. Yes. Well, I can't stop now. I said, so many folks out of work and this money, money, money. I can't. Oh, man. I got to have this money, 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 money. Oh, me. See? He'll work you over. And then, if he can't get you that way, he'll just make you to think you're the best thing ever born. Yes, even your nose is shaped different. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're somebody special. One of a kind. Ain't nobody like you. And he gets you to believe in that stuff, you know. And you wear your mirror out. <laughs> and brother when he discovers which part of your makeup is the weakest he's on your case and unless you are Holy Ghost filled and know how to pray he'll knock you clean out God and damn your soul he never gives up that's one thing you can say about him. Now, you do know that when you are dedicated, consecrated, Holy Ghost filled, serving God with all your might, the enemy stands back from you because you're too much for him. 
too hot for him to handle. That's right. He, he, he had to respect that anointing. God Almighty. He, he can't cross the bread line. But he's still hanging around there. You can believe that. And all he's waiting for, some weakness. For you to stop fasting and praying. Don't read the word. Get involved with too many things. Some people stretch themselves out too much. The sewing circle and this club and that club and the other club. So many clubs. Ain't got time to pray or read the Bible. And when that happens, that leaves a weakness about you. And the enemy, when you were red hot with the Holy Ghost, he, he just had to stand back and watch you. But when you cool down, he'll get on your case. He never gives up. Never gives up. He knows he's going to the lake of fire. He's determined to turn everybody he can into the lake of fire. He don't play fair. He's a very rascal. Yes. Now I'm going to show you a case here and then we're going to close out. Uh, some years ago, I met a man of God in a ministry. Uh, I won't call any names or any locations. But the man... They, some of them call him a prince among preachers because not only was the man gifted and eloquent but he was meek and humble little children just loved him to pieces uh, his expression on his face would just about melt you down an unusual man of God one of his favorite sermons, he used the title, Making It on Broken Pieces. Some of you know he was talking about Paul's shipwreck. Some of them grabbed hold to those pieces and made it safely across. And that was one of his favorite sermons. When he, any time he preached that one, brother, not only do the sinners hit the altar, but the saints are so revived. If it were possible, they would climb the walls. I tell you. So I was able to sit on his ministry several times. All right. Now, some of you know this. Satan will not sit still and let you beat him and he don't fight back. When you are holy, your life alone does damage to Satan. But then in addition to that, if you have a ministry, some of you have a telephone ministry, trap ministry, door-to-door -door ministry, street corner ministry. Uh, you have different types, hospital ministry, ministry with elderly people, ministry with little children. So your ministry, the life you live and the work you do hurts Satan and his kingdom. It does him damage, it bruises him. He's not going to sit still and take it without fighting back. And he don't fight clean. So by checking you out on body, soul, and spirit, he discovered which part in you is weaker than the other two. And that's the one he works on. He gets on it with everything he's got. And if you fail in your dedication, your consecration, your prayer, and your Bible study, he'll be on you so fast you won't know what happened. A prince among preachers. He had a team that traveled with him. And uh, I'll get right to the point. Because the man was pure and his message was strong and holy, there were some persons that did not like it the enemy used them to fight against this man and his ministry. They tried when he applied for a permit in certain cities, they tried to block it. When he wanted to put up a tent, they tried to block that. Anything good, they tried to block it. So, God stood with him. Stood with him. 
So what happened? This man was doing so much damage to Satan's kingdom that somebody, I don't know the facts of it all, somebody in high places put some money out to try to destroy the man. And uh, some women, professional preacher killers, there are some women, you know, that are professional at killing preachers. That's their only job, to kill a preacher. They know just how to get up on his skin. Just how to melt his heart. Just how to throw him off guard so they can damn him. Either make him commit adultery or make him steal or something or another. There are some professional women out there. Their whole job is to destroy holy men of God. Brother, the top set the job. Somebody put some money behind it and put some women on his trail. Said, we've got to stop this man. He's a human being like everybody else. He said, I'm going to pay you well. You want you to get this man. Because his life and his ministry is upsetting us. So, some of his crusades these women would filter in. They had expense money. They were told, if necessary, to follow him from one city to the next. And here's what they did. This woman that was the leader of the group, she was something else. Male or female would look at her. That woman was so pretty and so attractive. You almost wondered was she real you wanted to touch it for yourself outstanding beauty she was the leader of the group she told the other women do the best you can but I'm going to get this one myself I'm going to get him myself and uh, she was so good at it that you know some ministers when they minister over the sick they favor one hand over the other some favor the right hand to lay hands Others favor to lay hands with the left hand. Some have a certain stance. This woman was so professional, she observed the man's manner. She knew which hand he favored. She even knew how he, his stance was. And so what she did, she came up one night to him after service. Beautiful woman. Shook his hands and said, you know, that message was just for me. He said, God gave it to you. You'll never know how much you helped me. She did that, you see, because she was a knockout. She knew she was good looking. And she went right up to him and did that. Okay. So then, she went back to the group. She says, now, tomorrow night, when he makes his prayer line, I'm going to fall on top of him. Let him feel the goods. And then I'm going to look him right in his eyes, and I can tell by his eyes what's going on. <laughs> Ain't that a mess? Now, you know, most, most of God's, all of God's, they, they don't want no mess like that. And there are some men, I've seen him do it, the woman, he sensed the woman was going to try to fall on him, he stepped aside and let her hit the floor. <laughs> yeah. But this one, I tell you, this woman, well, she was a professional. She knew her job. And she knew which hand he favored and she knew the stance. That way she would know when to fall in order to make a direct hit. And she come up there that night to the prayer line and fell on the preacher and looked him right in his eyes. And then she went back and told the other sisters, I got him going now. I got him going. He said, ain't going to be long now. I got him going. Now, this man of God, all he had to do when he went back to his room, all he had to do in his own words say, oh my God, I perceive Satan has launched an attack against me. 
but I'm your child and I didn't start to stop but I'm going all the way he says Satan I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus the blood of the king is against you you are lying under hell is your home you'll never get me that, that's all you had to do but by that time those women were, were flooding in there every night and, and shaking his hand and all like that uh, by that time when he went home to close his eyes instead of praying all he could see was pretty women <laughs> big hips and pretty legs so he didn't tell God nothing And that woman come up that night, shook his hand, and wiggled that finger in his palm. I had never figured out how they could do that. Shake your hand and wiggle a finger at the same time. That means you, you show sin me. I like you, and any time you're ready, just let me know. That's the signal. Now, you, you, I tell you, it's a mess. You, you got to be crazy or out of your mind. Come up to a servant in God, of God and pull a stunt like that. And wiggle that thing in there. You show sure send me. When you're ready, just let me know. And because the man would not seek God and be renewed, they broke him down. When he go home, he closed his eyes, started praying all he could see was pretty women, big hips, and pretty legs. He ain't asked God nothing. And brother, they broke that man down. After the, the service, he would go to the Sheraton Hotel, laying up with them women. They'd trail him from town to town, state to state. And he just went wild, just went wild. And you know, as I said, if you would look at the man, you'd be impressed with just the expression on his face. Humility. Something about him. A prince. And I believe that's why God showed him mercy. The man had a good heart. But if he failed to supplicate and call upon God when things got hot. And he just went wild. Every town he go to, he finish the service and over to the motel. Terrible. Now you and I know if you do that, you can forget about heaven. But God loved that man so. He didn't want him to go to hell. So you know what he did? God struck him and paralyzed him from his neck down. And rushed the man to the hospital. For three days and three nights, that man hollered and grunted and screamed. No feeling from his neck down. That's why the doctors and nurses could not understand this. What is he crying and hollering and screaming for? He's not, he can't feel anything from his neck down. God paralyzed the man. But yet for three days and three nights, he grunted and screamed and hollered. But then after three days and three nights, he, he come right down. And he sent for his team, all of his workers. And all of them, he got permission for the doctors to allow all of them to come into his bedroom. And here he was. He said to them, he said, you know what? We have failed God. When everybody was against us, God was for us. He have always met our expenses. We have been a blessing to many souls in many places. He said, but then we got lusting after women and greedy over money. He said to his team, he said, for three days and three nights laying on this bed, I saw hell. I felt the fire burning my body. That's why the man was screaming. The doctors and nurses, they couldn't understand it. He said, I felt the fire of hell burning my body. 
three days and three nights I could see the flames licking me I could see souls falling in the fire in hell he said I deserve to go to hell but God had mercy on my soul he said to his workers I'm only 37 years old but I got to die the Lord had told me I got to die he said but one thing about it when I die now I'll wake up in the arms of Jesus he said I made it in just by the skin of my teeth I just made it in by the skin of my teeth he said then he turned his head to all his workers he said now I want every one of y'all get on your knees so I know this is the hospital but I'm still your leader get on your knees and we have failed God this money stuff it ain't worth it this this fame and it ain't worth it fornication adultery it ain't worth it so get on your knees every one of you the man preached his greatest sermon on the deathbed He said, I got to die. Only 37 years old, I got to die. God done told me I can't live. But one thing about it, when I die, I'll wake up in the arms of Jesus. Just made it by the skin of my teeth. God help us. What about you tonight? What about you? You have to turn it all over to sweet Jesus. Nothing left out for you. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Can't leave nothing hanging off, nothing hanging out. Everything must be on the altar. Here I am, Lord, I am. Not much to me that I'm yours. I'm not too brilliant in my brain, but I'm yours. I'm not too strong. I don't have a whole lot of muscles and physical tenacity, but I'm yours. I don't have a lot of money. I don't own no property, but I'm yours. I'm yours. And I'll never turn back. My heart's fixed and my mind's made up. I'm going with you if I got to go by myself. I love my husband, but I'm not going to backslide over my husband. I love my wife, but I'm not going to let her turn me around. Mother and daddy can't turn me around. My heart's fixed. I love you. I love you. More than life, I love you. More than fame and fortune, I love you. Come what may, I love you. Summertime, I love you. Wintertime, I love you. Things are smooth, I love you. When they get rough, I love you anyhow. Thank you, Jesus. You're my Savior. You're my Father. You're my God. You're my King. I'll never turn back. And so you see, I'm coming back to the same thing you've heard many times. You owe God 10% of your time, 24 hours in the day that comes to two hours and 24 minutes you owe God every day you live part of that time is prayer when you pray you're talking to God looking him in the face make love to him and if necessary tell him what you want or just sing him songs and love him to pieces yes the other part is Bible study every day day by day though the outer man perish the inner man must be renewed day by day you pray, you talk to God, you read the Bible, that's God talking back to you. That's soul food, that feeds your soul and sets your spirit on fire. And it's health to the marrow of the bone. You can't take no vacation from that. If you, you cut something, you cut something else. But you don't cut your prayer time and your Bible study time. That's the key to your success. Even faith cannot be stored up. You cannot store up faith. It must be renewed. 
day by day. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You give, give God his time in prayer and Bible study. You can't get tired on the journey because every day is a brand new day. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. That's the key to your success. Nothing gets in the way of your time with God. If you have to cut something, you cut something else. But you make time for sweet Jesus. That's the key to your success. And the more you go to God like that, two hours and 24 minutes a day, you heard me say that you can't do it all at once. Some of you have jobs and so on. So you start the day off with prayer. Never leave home without praying. As soon as you wake up, you ought to be saying, good morning, Lord, yes. before your feet hit the floor. Thank God. Yes. Yeah, man. Get in part of your lunch hour. Like I said, some of y'all are too fat anyhow. <laughs> and in between time, you sing, make melody in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Wave your hand and call him sweet names. At night, give him a good season when things are quiet. And if you are faithful to do that, you'll run the race to the finish line. Nothing and nobody will stop you or turn you around. This prince of preachers, all he had to do is get grips on the Lord. I perceive Satan had launched an attack against me. I didn't start to stop, but I'm going all the way. Now, Satan, in the name of Jesus, you ugly thing, you. I rebuke you. I curse your evil force and bind you now. I charge you, no! That blood's against you. I'm God's child. My name is written in heaven. I'm sanctified and holy ghost here. My heart is fixed. My mind is made up. Why? I'm going with the king. If I put the bed by myself. Thank you, Jesus. Goodbye, Lord. I'm gone. <laughs> God Almighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Day by day. That's the key. Show me a man or woman. We we'll give God that time daily in prayer and Bible study. I'll show you somebody who will run the race to the finish line. And that same somebody will bring souls with them when they come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Temptation three ways. Through the body, it's food and sex. Through the soul, it's the comforts of life. Grasping after things and putting God second. In the spirit, it's pride. You got the big heads. Can't nobody tell you nothing. When he finds out the weakest part, he's on you like white on rice. If you're not Holy Ghost filled and prayed up, he will knock you flat out. Laugh at you and go to working on the next one. Be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resists steadfast in the faith. God help us. God help us. A prince among preachers. I got a chance to hear him three times. God had to kill him to keep him from going to hell. Now that's just putting it blunt. He had to kill him to keep him from going to hell. Paralyzed him from his neck down. 37 years old. Had to kill him to keep him from going to hell. Now, you are blessed to have a pastor who is unusual. I have never, I've traveled a lot, I've met a lot of ministers. There are some pastors that try to pastor and evangelize both, it never works. It's very rare you can do both at the same time. We do know that uh, 
Philip uh, was an unusual man. He started out as a deacon. Then later God used him as an evangelist. And when he got seasoned in age, he became a pastor. He had seven daughters, all of them prophesied. So God used that man from a deacon uh, to an evangelist and then to a pastor. But it's rare to see someone can fulfill two offices at the same time. There are some out there who are evangelists, really, but if you're not gifted, if you're really not locked up with Jesus, uh, I, I tell young, one man wrote me, young fellow, he said, Brother Sullivan, he said, I, I just quit my job to go full time in the ministry. He said, I got a few meetings, but they're going to soon run out. Can you help me get some? <laughs> Ain't no more ready than a roach. <laughs> so, I, I wrote him back, you know, because you have to be honest with people. I said, now, I gave him the scripture that a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. So I said to him, listen, if you are anointed and can meet the needs of the people, one door will open another door. I said, but if you have not reached that, go back on the job. I ain't never heard no more from him. <laughs> oh God. Temptation three ways. The one thing about the enemy, he never gives up on you. You might relax, you might try to coach, but he doesn't. The smallest opening he finds He'll give you a blow sometimes you'll never recover from. So you need to give God daily the tithe of your time. Two hours and 24 minutes, singing, making melody, praying, reading the scriptures. That way, each day you are renewed. Every day is a new day. No, you don't get tired, it's just getting sweeter as the day goes by. And when you do like that, there won't be no backsliding. You'll run the race to the finish line. I'm sorry that thing happened, but I'm glad to say the minister made it in with God. But look at all the good he could have done. The souls that could have been reached. Because he failed to rebuke the adversary when he realized he was under attack. God had to kill him to keep him from going to hell. Thirty-seven years old. Oh, God help us. Now tonight, here's what we like to do. In a little bit I will be ministering for those that need healing or miracle of any description. I want you to believe God for the impossible. But those of you, I'm going to have you stand in just a little bit, who are not saved, uh, you're having trouble receiving the Holy Ghost. Somehow the enemy battling in, you, in your mind, you can't seem to overcome it, making you act foolish. And, uh, the ones you should love, you hate, and the ones you ought to hate, you love. <laughs> That's right. The old weak head folks ain't worth a dime, you're hanging all around them. But the people that's holy, I ain't stunned them. You got you half crazy walking around here. So here's what, here's a chance for you to lay it flat on the altar. Get down here and settle this thing. Boy, I tell you, when you get it right, it's joy unspeakable, full of glory. So when I give a signal, those of you that's not saved, or you're confused, you're mixed up, you're done backslid, uh, you're having problems in your brain. When I give the signal, we're going to let you come on down around the altar. If necessary, we'll move this table out of the way and let you kneel down and someone be here to help you pray. Amen. And then following that, I want you to receive your miracle, your healing.
I don't care what it is. I don't care. Blood, heart, nerves, muscle, glands, organs, eyes, ears, back. It doesn't matter. Jesus is here to fix it for you tonight. When I give the signal, we shall stand. Those of you that need prayer, you recognize the enemy have found that opening and he's been working, giving you fit. We want you to confess it, forsake it, and let God make it right for you. Temptation. Three ways. Get ready. In the name of Jesus, our Savior King. Now remember, the healing miracle part was coming after this. These are those that are need to settle things with God. Get your sins under the blood. Get that doubt out of your mind. Now is your time. In Jesus' name, everyone, please stand. That way those that's near you can get around. Make your way down to the front. Thank God. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. That's right, come right on down. Find a place and kneel. Move those cords out of your way. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That's right, thank you. You mean it from your heart, but you must say it out of your mouth. Talk right flat, straight to God. Look him in the face. Tell him what you want. There's plenty of room here. If you want to come, ease out there. Step aside, get out of your way. Temptation. Three ways. Without sweet Jesus and the Holy Ghost, you are no match for the wicked one. He's wiser than you. He's older than you. He can see you, but you cannot see him. Gives him an unfair advantage over you. He'll crush you. But you make it right with the king. Then you'll drive the enemy away. Come, if the enemy all wish to come, we'd like for you to get here because we have some of the ministers and workers that can pray with you. But if you don't come, we, we're not the type to come after you or force you. We love for you after you hear the word that you harden not your heart. You recognize your need and come to God with it. Yes, Lord. Temptation. Three ways. We'll make space for you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Thank God. Thank God. That's good. We're so thrilled that you're kneeling, but I'm, you see I'm going slow because I don't want anyone to leave without this that really needs it. You know, notice Pastor Crump and most of the ministers that he gets, we're not the type to force you. We'll make it plain. We'll drop it flat on your lap. So you can you have no excuse about it. But we will not force you to come. It's up to you. Hallelujah. If you move this way now, ease on out into the aisle and come. Those who are already kneeling, you can talk to God. Open your mouth. Just look him right in the face. Tell him just what you want. Tell him how you feel and what you need and what you desire. And then others are coming to pray with you. Is there anyone else out there who would like to come? Now is the time to make your move because the brothers and sisters are coming in to pray among these. Now is the time to come forward. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. That's good, that's good. I see you coming. That's lovely. And just a little bit. Our dear sisters and our brothers are going to get right in among you and pray with you. God Almighty, let this be the night of deliverance. The turning point for you. Yes, Lord. Sweet Jesus is here. The Holy Ghost is ready to work. 
some of you will be able to mark your calendar when you get home because this is a special night this is the night of victory deliverance and peace with sweet Jesus hallelujah all right any other brothers and sisters are free to get in among them and pray I'm coming down with you any of our holy brothers and sisters those of you that's here that's right that's right say it out your mouth tell God exactly what you want talk to him about it that's the way to do it oh my God today thank you victory 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 this is the night of victory yes Lord thank you Jesus break every yoke and loose the minds of the people Satan the Lord will book you get out the mind you devil you loose your hold the blood's against you you lying wonder Jesus cast you out take your hand off of them you can't have them oh God Holy Ghost have your way move upon the people make the crooked straight forgive the sin loose the mind set the captive free deliver Lord spirit soul and body Holy Ghost fix it right now yes Lord yes Lord those of you out there you're free to stand like you're doing or you may sit if you like it's up to you you're free to remain standing if you like or you may sit oh God thank you give peace tonight Holy Ghost move on the people loose the mind let your blood come up Break the yoke. Let the captain go free. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Heal that mind, that soul, that spirit. Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, have your way. Set him free. Right now. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, thank you Jesus. 
Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, have your way. Jesus, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. Hey, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, have your way. 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 Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, have your way. Yeah. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, have your way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. Holy Ghost. Oh, God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, yes. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yay! Hallelujah, hallelujah! Yay! Yeah! Hallelujah! Oh, glory! Hallelujah, hallelujah! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yay! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, yes, sir. Everyone that can clap your hands together, say thank you, Jesus. 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 Stand up if you can. Stand up if you can. Stand up, tell him, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yay! Yay! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God, my God. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yeah! Thank you. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yay! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey.
Jehovah. Hallelujah! 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 Hey! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah! Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey! Yes, 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 Lord, yes, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hey, hallelujah, ah. oh, thank you, Jesus, glory to God.